you're watching Gears. Hey, welcome to Gears. You know, a while back, we dug into the world of the supercar and showed you that you didn't have to buy a Ferrari or a Lamborghini or a Porsche or a Jaguar to go fast. Not when there's cars like the SLC out there from Superlight Cars that allows you to build an exotic mid-engine supercar in your garage for about the price of a new Corvette, depending on how fast you want to go. But supercars, just like muscle cars, have different levels of super. And one of the biggest questions that we get about the SLC is what level of super is this thing capable of? I mean, an LS7 is nice, but it's not very exotic. But twin turbos on an LS7 in this car, that would be exotic, especially if the horsepower was around 1,000. Now we're talking Bugatti Veyron level of super. But of course, nothing like that's available for a car like this, right? Well, it is now, thanks to Schwartz Performance. Take a look. Schwartz Performance specializes in building chassis and components for all kinds of street machines. But one of their main specialties is turbo systems and engines that make huge horsepower. And we did a Pontiac 389 uh, twin turbo setup that made 900 horsepower out of a 389 Pontiac. And it was just locomotive uh, torque. It, at 3,500 RPM, it had like 800 foot-pounds. It was just crazy, crazy low RPM torque. Now, you can't just slap twin turbos on an LS7 because the rods and pistons will pretty much turn to dust. So the first thing they did was stuff in forged Wiseco pistons and K1 Technologies forged steel H-beam rods. Now, these were bolted to an Eagle forged crank with ARP hardware to give us a bottom end that's capable of supporting over 1,200 horsepower. Uh, going to the Silver State Classic, it was, it was 6,500 feet above sea level. Not many people know that, but you think of a desert in Nevada, you think of a flat, low-lying, 900 feet above sea level maybe, but it was 6,500 feet above sea level in Ely, Nevada, where they did that event. So um, we figured we needed more horsepower than the car had. Um, so we did the twin turbo setup and ended up 1,003 horsepower and it was like 800 and some odd foot pounds of torque. With the engine internals taken care of, a twin turbo system was fabricated that mounts twin Turbonetics turbos by the frame rails. The boost then flows into twin Spearco intercoolers that Schwartz mounted in the airflow coming in the side scoops of the body. From there, the cooled charge runs up into the intake through custom built tubing. Turbonetics waste gates and TurboSmart blow-off valves were also used to round out the system. And what we've got here is a state-of-the-art twin turbo system in LS7 that's good for around a thousand horsepower, depending on how we tune it. Now, the best part is, this isn't just a one-off system that nobody else can have, because there's a lot of you out there that are building SLCs and you want a twin turbo system. That's why we went to Schwartz Performance. Now you can go to Schwartz Performance, buy this system, and bolt it on your SLC. Just don't make it faster than mine. With uh, this car here, the SLC, uh, which is a really state-of-the-art piece, we're doing pretty much the same setup. It's the same size turbos and, and everything that we had on our, on our car that went 211 in the standing mile. Now, I know some of you are wondering about the rest of the exhaust system. And for that, we sent the car off to the guys at Stainless Works and had them create an exhaust system that will work with the twin turbos. Obviously, there's not a lot of room here, but they didn't need much because they take the exhaust right from the turbo, run it through a small muffler to sweeten the sound, and dump it out the vents in the back with dual tips to match the taillights. Very cool. The best part is that exhaust system is available from Stainless Works. So if you're building an SLC with or without a turbo, they can take care of the exhaust system. Now, with as much noise and heat as we've got going on back here, keeping it cool and quiet inside the cab is going to be a bit of a problem. So we went to a place called Hushmat and picked up some of their sound deadening material because it not only deadens sound, it also blocks heat. All you got to do is pull the backing off and stick it in place. As you can see, it'll contour right to the shape that you need.
You know, one thing that we try to do on Gears is a wide variety of projects, because not everybody's got the same interests or the same budget. But no matter what project you're working on, they all have a couple things in common. They all need brake and fuel lines. And no matter what the vehicle, the approach is the same. You either go down to the local auto parts store and try to piece something together, or you look to the aftermarket. Now, we've already talked about the importance of using a Teflon-based fuel line, like this from Earl's, to handle ethanol-based fuels. But for AN fittings, about the slickest thing out there are these from Jiffy Tight. Take a look at this. Now, these may look like typical AN fittings, but they're not, because they have this special quick disconnect right out of the racing world that allows you to disconnect your transmission or fuel lines in just seconds. Sometimes it's the little things that really do make a big difference. Speaking of little things, what about all those little brake hoses and fittings that you're going to need to connect your master cylinder to your brakes? Where are you going to find them on a car like this? You're not going to use stock and you're not going to find them at the local auto parts store. What you need to do is contact Pure Choice Motorsports and tell them what you need. Now what they'll do is put together a complete system of hoses, hard lines, fittings, based on the master cylinder and brakes and all the components that you're going to use. As you can see, they're all well labeled, ready to go right in place. These guys have been doing this a long time, and if you want your brake system to fit right the first time, Pure Choice can save you a lot of hassles. Now, Quick Tip, brought to you by E3 Spark Plugs, born to burn. You know, one of the most frustrating things to do on a car or truck is bleed a hydraulic clutch. Whether you're using a traditional slave cylinder like this car does, or a hydraulic throw-up bearing like this, they can be a real pain in the rear. Well, fortunately, there is a solution in this tool called the Max Pro from Phoenix Systems. Now, this uses reverse bleed technology, which pushes the air from the slave cylinder up into the master cylinder, the direction that the air wants to go, instead of sucking it back down the other direction. This allows one person to bleed brakes or a clutch in just a few minutes. If you have a truck, a car, a motorcycle, a snowmobile, anything with brakes or a hydraulic clutch, you need one of these tools, or at least somebody to borrow one from. If you'd like to learn more tips to make your life easier in the shop, check out the tips page on the website. Now, there's no doubt that the SLC is a cool project, and a lot of people would like to build a car like this but not everybody has the time or the budget to build a car like this, but they still want something cool. And one of the biggest questions that we get is what is a good sports car to pick up that a person can do some modifications to, make it cool without spending a fortune? And believe it or not, one of the best choices is a first generation Z car because they made a zillion of them. They had a great suspension, a great engine, and there's a huge aftermarket that supports them. Now, Obviously, if you've got a 240, you probably don't want to cut that up because that's collectible. But a later 280 with these big goofy bumpers, it's a perfect choice because they're affordable and it still has that basic shape that Nissan Datsun took right from the legendary Ferrari 250 GTO. Matter of fact, it'd be kind of cool to accentuate this shape a little bit, wouldn't it? Well, with this car, you can. Take a look. It just so happens that Carrera Coachworks has a fiberglass body kit to make your early Z car look more like a Ferrari GTO than you can imagine. The front clip bolts right in place of the stock sheet metal, and the rear clip bonds on very similar to the kit that we put on the band sheet. Door skins round out the shape to give you a car that you can build as a replica, or a more modern car with classic styling. Now, of course, you can stop right there with a body kit, or you can call up the guys at Techno Versions and pick up a small block Ford V8 conversion kit for your early Z car. Look at this. It's got frame rail supports, it's got cross member, motor mounts, everything's powder coated. You even have a transmission cross member. Everything you're gonna need to put a really nasty small block Ford in your early Z car. Now, of course, you do that, you're going to need a stronger frame. And the guys at Bad Dog Parts have these frame rail supports that go right over your original frame and strengthen that unibody. It's a good thing to do whether you put a V8 in or not. And the point is, there is a ton of aftermarket support, but not just for Z cars. 
It's also out there for Toyotas and Hondas and Fords and Chevys and muscle cars and kit cars and four-wheel drives and hot rods, which means pretty much anything has the potential to be a project for you. The question is, which one are you going to do? Every gearhead starts somewhere, whether it be models, die cast, radio control, whatever. You hear it? I hear it! There was something that fanned the flames and ignited your passion for mechanical things. You pull that T-stick, those SSP racers howl with power. But when it came time to get that first motorized project, most of us didn't start with a car. No, most of us started with something like a go-kart because that's all we could afford and it's all we could legally drive. Now, the go-kart concept has been around for a long time, but they didn't always look like this. No, back in the day, they looked more like this. And through the 60s and 70s, they were the hottest thing going. With tracks springing up in parking lots all across the nation, everybody was driving go-karts because they were fun, fast, exciting, and inexpensive enough for most people to afford. But there was more to it than that. It was also a great way to learn some real driving and mechanical skills. But what if you don't have a go-kart, or the time, or the tools, or the money to build one? Can you still experience something like this? Yeah, you can. We've got the perfect place for you. Uh, the speed park here in Sevierville, Tennessee, in the heart of the Smoky Mountains, opened in May of 1999. Go-karts are awesome. <laughs> Everybody loves go-karts. Uh, we've got uh, go-karts for uh, three and four-year-old children on our baby Bristol track, uh, and we've got a big, bigger track on a quarter-mile D oval. It's called the Smoky Mountain Speedway. And you have to be 16 with a license to drive it. It's a 3-8 scale uh, go-kart. What this does is allow young and old alike to strap into a cart and live out their racing fantasies again and again and again. Now these carts are a lot different than the ones from the 60s in that they have racy fiberglass bodies to add a cool factor, crash absorbing bumpers all around to keep people from getting hurt, and engines ranging from 5 to 13 horsepower to give drivers the thrill that they're after. First question everybody wants to know, is what's the fastest car and how do I get there? But with around 200 small engines running all day long, it takes a lot of maintenance to keep them running. And you might be surprised on the types of products they use. The E3 small engine plug is really where E3 started. Uh, we did all of our initial testing with Georgia Tech, Michigan State, the EPA, all with lawn and garden and small engine plugs. And uh, it just was a natural transition for us to look at this kind of engine. With E3, E3's been providing our spark plugs now for, for about a year, year and a half. And we've seen a lot of uh, improvements by making that switch. Uh, the fuel consumption has gone down at least 20%. We're getting an extended life out of the plugs. We're not having to change as many. Uh, the, the heat uh, the, that's generated by the engine has actually gone down a little bit. It's been a really great uh, thing for us to, to do, to use that E3 plug. And that's all fine and good, but none of that really makes any difference once you strap in the cart. Check it flag, you're ready to go, check it flag. Because all you want to do now is go as fast as you can for as long as possible. And that's it. That's how it starts. You are now officially a gearhead. And you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you, <laughs> and you. And now, Parts Bin. The cool thing about the mechanical world is you never know when an idea is going to turn into a full-fledged industry. For example, helicopters were thought to be mechanically impossible in the 40s. 
Its idea has occupied man's thought for centuries. And model rockets of the 50s lift off. We have a lift off. became NASA to put us on the moon in the 60s. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Fortunately, you can have a flight experience right in your own backyard with Estes rockets and helicopters. Now, Estes is a name that you've heard before, but some things have changed over the years. Look at this. They still have the launch pads that you remember, all the engines that you're going to need to launch your rockets, and they've got a whole assortment of rockets that'll go up to 1,000 feet. But the big change is, is that they now have a booster, which makes this a two-stage rocket and will double your height, which means a rocket like that will go about 1,500 feet. That's almost out of sight. Of course, they recover the same way that they always have with a tip coming off, parachute comes out, everything floats back down to the ground. It's a fun deal. Now, the helicopters use state-of-the-art stability control, so you can actually spend time flying these things instead of just crashing them into furniture. If you've never spent time with radio control helicopters or model rockets, you don't know what you're missing. But you can find out real quick with a call or an email to Estes Rockets. You know, one thing we like to do on Gears is keep our fingers on the pulse of the automotive industry so we can bring you the newest, hottest, coolest things that are out there. And one of the hottest trends in paint isn't paint at all. It's actually a vinyl wrap which goes right over your existing paint and changes the look and personality of your vehicle in just a short period of time. So, to show the potential of a vinyl wrap, we went to Ace High Signs in Nashville, Tennessee and had them wrap our vintage fire engine. Yeah, here we go. Who wouldn't want a fire truck, man? Here we go. And this thing get right down the road. Over the course of a few days, the truck went from a faded red to a flat black hot rod look in just a fraction of the time and the cost of a full paint job. The vinyl wrap is strong, durable, and will resist fading for years. And the best part is, if you get tired of it, you just peel it off and do something else. Yeah, it will take about a day or two to get the designs laid out and then to print it off. Uh, it'll take about another 12 hours, but the actual application of the wrap usually will only take six or eight hours to do the whole vehicle. So a customer a lot of time will drop a vehicle off with me on a Wednesday and they can pick it up Friday afternoon. And we've had time to do the artwork, the print, and the application on it. If you're wanting to change the look of your vehicle and not spend a fortune, a vinyl wrap is something you may want to look into. If you watch Gears very much, you know that one of our main goals is to encourage people to get out there and build something. Whether it's a muscle car, or a sports car, or a 4x4, or a go-kart, or just a model, it's all good. And to help promote that, for the last three years, we've been doing a model building contest with Ravel. And this year, it's been bigger than ever, because more people are building models, and it's not just cars this year. It's cars, trucks, and World War II aircraft. And because of that, we are still in the judging stage. But once we get it all decided, the results will be listed on the Ravel.com website along with pictures of the winning entries. But in the meantime, we wanted to show you some of the incredible model building talent that's out there. These are just some of the entries. And that's just a few of the entries. As you can see, picking a winner in a contest like this is not an easy task. But the winners will be on the Ravel website, so make sure you keep checking it out. Not only for this contest, but for the announcement of the new contest. Because we want to see your name on that plaque. And now, what are you working on? Brought to you by Spiderweb Modular Storage Solutions. Today's What Are You Working On comes from Gary Silvis from Sardinia, Ohio. And Gary's been building vehicles for a long time, but he's always wanted to race a streamliner at Bonneville. Saw him as a kid, 
always wanted to do one. So he set a goal for himself. He wanted to build, design, and drive his own vehicle over 200 miles an hour using a motorcycle engine for power. So he started working. He and his dad built a table and they started laying out tubing. And as you can see, it's a very unique design. He put the two rear wheels in line with each other instead of side by side. This keeps the car very slender. It's only 30 inches wide. Now up front, the two wheels are side by side with a very unique suspension. And then everything was covered with sheet metal to help it slip through the air better. Now Gary says it took him about a year of intense work to put this thing together. He had a lot of help from his dad and his sister and his friends. But the first time out, he ran 119 miles an hour. And since that time, he's been up to 168. Now he's still working on going faster. He's going to put nitrous on soon. And he's going to cross that 200 mile an hour barrier. Gary, you let us know when you do. And for sending in such a cool project, and the fact that we know that you're going to need some more storage space, we're going to set you up with a bunch of shelving from Spiderweb Modular Storage Solutions. Now this will allow you to get all those parts up off the floor and get them on the shelves. And you can take this stuff in your trailer to the racetrack. That will help you out there too. Also, we're going to give you a year's subscription of Four Wheeler Magazine to get you into that four wheel drive world a little bit. And we're going to give you a project build book and a fender cover so you can keep track of your project and protect it when you're working on it. Now, for the rest of you guys, if you want to get in on this, you got to send your project into what are you working on. We'll do our best to get it on the air. Also, don't forget to check us out on Twitter and Facebook. We've always got cool stuff going on there. And keep checking back on the website because we've got some new books coming out to help you with your project so you can finish it and get out there and enjoy it like Gary's doing. All right, that takes care of it for today. It's time for you to get out there and start working on something. We'll see you next time.